Good morning, everybody. I'm Rhonda Walker, alongside the Director of Public Safety and Frazier's Police Department. Officer Rohead, thank you so much for joining me. It's a pleasure being here. Thank you for having me. Yeah, and it's uh, great to see what your department really spearheading the way to raise awareness about this drug epidemic that a lot of people aren't aware has gotten so serious. Yes, we've been battling this issue for the last 10 years. And what the frustrating thing is, you know, I've been in this business for 31 years, and it's one of those things that you know you can't win, but we're certainly making a difference in people's lives. You certainly are. And we want to tell you that here at Local 4 and also on Clifton Detroit, this entire day we are dedicating to this opioid epidemic and beyond. We're talking about other narcotics, other drugs as well, but also helping to educate people and parents about what to look for, the dangers of it, the consequences of it, what to look for in people, changes, uh, the paraphernalia that's being used now that really is quite eye-opening, uh, but also the stigma that people who are using drugs are yes. undergoing as well. Yes. And before we get to more about what your department is doing and also all these household products that you're looking at right here are actually used for drugs in one way, shape, or form. We're going to get to this, but we do want to start with just another look at this drug epidemic. You want an easy explanation of drug addiction? Drug addicts are just bad people, right? Well, we love labels. We love simple answers. If only the epidemic in America was that simple. Just how bad is America's drug problem? Is epidemic an overstatement? Macomb County District Court Judge Linda Davis. I think it's a massive epidemic. I think it's the worst epidemic this country has ever seen. And by most accounts, an epidemic of prescription drug abuse, heroin, and opioids that is getting worse. In Macomb County, our death toll doubled last year. And my prediction is that's going to happen for at least the next four years. The first challenge is to put down the criminal stereotypes of drug addiction. The real faces belong to our sons and daughters, moms and dads. I was getting drunk and passing out and taking pills and going places where I wasn't supposed to be. As long as I had a fifth and a couple packs of cigarettes, nothing mattered. That's what it can do, you know, it can, it can just take complete, completely take over you. I could stay up and cry every day for the rest of my life. But Vicki King lost her son to an overdose of heroin laced with fentanyl. Just good people that just sports figures um, get hooked because of injuries, and it's just everywhere. It's, there's no, it can be anybody. Judge Davis says we need to see drug addiction from a new perspective, a disease that requires treatment, not jail time. I was a prosecutor for many years, and I put a lot of drug addicts in, in prison. So for me, this was a major, when we talk about addicts changing, this was a 180 for me too. People out there in the world, they don't understand. They're always like, well, what's wrong with this person? Why can't you get it together? They don't understand it, that it is a disease. And recovery from that disease is a long, hard road. Recovery is like marriage. You know, so it's, in fact, it's a bigger commitment than marriage. You know, you don't have the option to walk away and still live. And I think what we're learning from this is that it is a disease. It is a long-term process for those that are abusing these drugs. And it's also forced police officers like you to approach it differently. Yes, it is a disease that affects the entire family. And as a police officer, you have to change your perspective on how to treat an addict. Back in the old days, the goal was to arrest an addict and throw him in jail and you throw away the key. But you know what? it does not work. It's not working. You have to do something differently and we have we have done many things. And well I think talk about change. this whole program that you have that's actually kind of giving forgiveness and showing that compassion to folks that may have warrants, may be in trouble, but are, are being forgiven to get that help they need. It's a newly formed program called Hope Not Handcuffs and what it is is when an addict feels that they need help, they can come into any police department in Macomb County. Matter of fact, Macomb County is the only county in the state of Michigan that has implemented this program. And they come into the station, they give us their name, we'll run a warrant check on them, but typically we will overlook uh, minor warrants. And um, we will call an angel, it's a volu uh, volunteer person, they will come out, they will fill out an intake sheet, and the main thing is to place this person into a a medical facility where they can get immediate help and if they don't have insurance if they don't have money it doesn't matter so. and I have to say 
if a person is an addict, the last place that they would think to go for for help would be a police department. They would think they they it's a foregone conclusion that they're in trouble. Exactly. And this program, I believe, it has serviced over 500 people wow. this year alone. And there's a network amongst addicts. And if they know that they're getting the proper help and they, they know they can it. trust the police department, mm -hmm. I think the numbers are going to double or even triple next year. So talk about what the Fraser Department of Public Safety has been doing for years in terms of educating the community, and not just the Fraser community, the, the broader Metro Detroit and Michigan community yes. as well. Well, education is key. And what we do is we have an elaborate drug display. It's been all over Michigan. We will take it anywhere that anyone wants if they want to see it. Um, we have certain things on the drug display that we show parents, like, for instance, if you look in this table here, we have a burnt spoon. Well, that means that somebody is cooking heroin in it. It's indicative mm -hmm. of that. And So that's just something, if you start noticing that your silverware exactly. is, is looking a little that's bit a different. Sign. That's a sign. If you look into a garbage can in your child's room and there's just Q-tips with the ends pulled off, that means they're using the cotton as a filtering agent for the heroin. If you can see in this spoon, wow. that's how that's set up. Okay. Another thing is too, typically kids, their shoelaces are missing. They're using the shoelaces as a tourniquet when they inject the heroin. Oh. And typically kids, they'll start snorting the heroin and then they build a tolerance and they want that high fast, so then they start injecting it. What do you... When you're talking to kids going to schools and you're kind of getting a little more insight even from parents that are that have, are coping with this, how does it start? How does it how does it as a child do they start to get to a point where they're burning heroin at home? Well, first of all, you don't you don't wake up and say, you know what, I want to be a heroin addict today. Right. It just and and honestly, most people get addicted from innocent things, from surgery, from from sport. Uh, maybe they injured the knee in a sport or they hurt their back. Next thing you know, if the doctor puts them on Vicodin or Oxycontin, and next, and next thing you know, if they're, they're hooked. We'll talk a little bit more about some of the items you brought here. I mean, something like a highlighter looks like any student, any backpack has highlighters in yes. it. You would not think that there's anything wrong with this. You're right, and, and we found this off a girl in the street, and it, it's a typical highlighter. You know, if you're a parent, you think, oh, my kid's, uh, doing their homework, but in reality, if you unscrew the end, it's a marijuana pipe. And you can buy these online, maybe $10, $15, but we're seeing these more and more. And also, there's other things too, like this water bottle. If you see this water bottle, you can pull the top off of it. It's hollow. Unbelievable. We found this on a raid. We found four ounces of cocaine in here. Again, another piece you can buy online. And there's, um, uh, how would you even, now you know what to look for. Yes, and we went to a school, as a matter of fact, we went to the school the same day we located that in a, in a, in a search warrant. One of the officers was pulling the tops off the bottle and, found and that this. came up. Yeah. And then the other thing too is a hairspray. This is actual hairspray, but if you unscrew the bottom, it's, it's hollowed oh, out. Oh, come on. And your son or daughter, they could store drugs in here. You would never know as a parent. You would never know. Lipstick tubes? Lipstick. Used to smoke marijuana. The one end has a hole in it. You put the marijuana here. Uses a smoking device. So these are all items that any typical boy or girl would have at home that you have in your house that you really just need as a parent to inspect if something behavior, something seems different in your kids. Talk yes. about that. Like how how do you just, the, the physical signs should you look out for? Well, you know what, you look at, like the, usually if you're using heroin, your pupils are pinpoint. Uh, usually your hygiene changes. Uh, girls, they don't comb their hair. Guys, they don't brush your teeth the way they dress. And you know what, my father always you know, told me, you are who your friends are, and that's mm -hmm. absolutely true. You have to keep track of who uh, your child is hanging out with. Um, look on their phones, their cell phones. You know, look at the text messages. But typically, uh, their grades start dropping right. in school, and their behavior, the way they talk to you, mm -hmm. disrespect you. So, you know, there's a lot of things. Plus, you have to look at the the crimes that are associated with addiction. Typically, people that are addicted to drugs, they steal, they commit retail fraud, they break into homes, they mm -hmm. break into your cars at night, and they use 
they'll steal change from your car and they use that to, to support their habit. So if a kid's getting arrested for minor crimes, that is a sign that he may be or she may be addicted to drugs. So what help is out there for parents? If they think right now, my child is in trouble, I mean, obviously there's that combat you know, to confront your child and, and how to talk to them about it. And that's difficult for parents. What support systems are out there? You know, there's a number of support systems where parents, they don't realize it. The greatest group that I've been involved with was is Families Against Narcotics. Mm -hmm. You can go on their website at familiesagainstnarcotics.org. It's a very informational piece. Again, Hope Not Handcuffs we're working with. And um, we, again, we go all over the, the we'll go all over the state with our drug display, educating people. We go to different schools. And one thing about our school district, they've been wonderful for letting us come in here and, and educating the parents, the administration, and that is key too. So if there are some organizations that are watching right now, other schools, school districts that are watching right now, what's the process if they want to have you come in with that drug display and really have that frank conversation with the parents, the teachers, the students? Because all they have to do is call the Fraser Department of Public Safety and they can ask for the chief, that's me, mm -hmm. <laughs> or they can ask for our community outreach officer, Lisa Pettis, and we will set something up for them. And again, we will go anywhere, it's no cost, and we'll be more than happy to educate. Talk about the outcomes. You visit these schools, you talk to kids, you talk to parents. What are some of the success stories or maybe some of the things that you've seen that, that have averted some of this behavior? You know, there's a few things. I, I get calls from parents thanking thanking me or thanking the officers for putting their, their child, not child, but you know, an 18 year old in jail mm. because they didn't know that they were addicted to drugs till oh, wow. after, you know, this kind of stuff went on. Mm -hmm. uh, we also uh, participate in a task force called Operation Smackdown. We, along with a hundred other police officers and a number of police agencies, get together, we identify drug houses and then we, we attack the drug houses, mm -hmm. you know. And then but, when uh, you talked about um, parents thanking you for arresting their kids, even in that, that process of arresting, you're still helping as well. You're providing that additional. You have to consistently offer support. Yeah. Support and education is key. And one thing I tell the parents, no matter what, if you have unused drugs at home in oh, a medicine wow. cabinet, get rid of them. We have a drop box in our lobby. You come there, you drop your pills off, don't flush them down the toilet. And um, no and cost, why is that? no why question. Why should you dispose of them well, in the garbage? We don't, or the we don't want to pollute the waters, yeah. and you know. But uh, for the most part, we will take uh, your drugs and we will dispose of them. Actually, most departments in Macomb County have the drop box. But you know, if you look at an oxycotton pill, it's sixty dollars a milligram. On it, it, it's sixty, or it's, is it ten? It's ten or ten dollars a milligram, or sixty dollars a milligram. That's expensive. Mm -hmm. The kids are getting it from the medicine cabinet. Mm. Or not only your child, but they're bringing friends into the house right. and they're going in and they're stealing the pills. Mm -hmm. So get rid of them, that's key. We are dedicating an entire day here at Local 4 to this epidemic. And we realize it's a huge problem. We're reporting on these stories every single day. But give us some perspective of just the changes that you've seen and why suddenly there's a whole organization called Families Against Narcotics and, and the efforts that are happening to try and combat this in a different way. How bad and big of a problem is this? This is an epidemic. It's been going on for at least 10 years. Uh, FAN was implemented in 2007. And the thing is, just in the city of Frazier alone, we had 30 overdoses mm. in one year, and some people were overdosing two and three times. So as a law enforcement officer, you're going, what is going on here in our community? We, we weren't used to this. Mm -hmm. Police officers are not trained in an academy how to deal with an addict. Mm. So what we did, we had one meeting in a, in a church basement, and that's what FAN was developed. Wow. Um, they have done, I mean, I can't, it was just remarkable. I mean, from 2007 till today, I mean, just educating people, billboards, uh, bringing in uh, guest speakers, going all over the state, and you educating have people. People that have lost loved ones to yes. drug abuse that are a part of this program yes. to help educate. You know, the sad part about it is people think if you close your eyes, you go, "What does an addict look like?" And you'll think, you look at maybe some long-haired guy laying in a gutter. It's the cheerleaders, it's the quarterbacks, it's the 4.0 students. Mm. 
You know, it it's just anybody. It's it's anybody. Rich, yeah. poor, it doesn't matter. It hits everybody. And when you know people that have lost a child, especially when you go to these meetings and you go around the room and everyone's saying, My kid's hooked to heroin, heroin, Vicodin and you see the pain in their face, mm. you know, you really that makes us want to work even harder for you. Absolutely. And talk the risk. These are illegal drugs. Yes. They could be laced with anything. How are you communicating that to these kids to say, listen, yeah, it's a high, but you are putting some foreign substance, you have no idea where it came from You're or right. what's in it, and it could literally kill you in an instant. Well, they're, they're making deadly cocktails now. They're mixing heroin with fentanyl, and that's deadly. You don't know, you have no idea what you're shooting in your vein. You don't know what these drugs are cut with and what they can do, but we try, we talk to the kids, we talk to them to, you know, to their head spin, to our head spin, and it's just, you try to get to them, but some listen, some don't. I mean, but again, this is what's frustrating about, about this is you're trying really hard. You know this is never going to go away, but again, we are, we're doing what we have to do, mm -hmm. and we are making an impact because our, the overdoses, we're, we're very rarely seeing them in our community now. I'm just pulling up our Local 4 Facebook page, which is where we're broadcasting live right now, just to see some of the responses. Um, we currently have Wayne County location at Harper Woods Police Department for Hope Not Handcuffs. So yes. uh, Katie Donovan just commenting that they are a part yeah. of this. Jackie Jenkins. Pharmaceutical companies and doctors need to stop prescribing pain medications to people. They are safe for treatments for pain. They create these addictions. Um, and I guess that's the one thing, you know, that even doctors say, you know, that it started out, you know, you're, you want the strongest drug to treat right. pain for people. But then all of a sudden you started to see the consequences of that long term right. where people were, were craving to try to get that some other way. And I, I can't tell you, we always talk about kids being addicts. But the elderly, I mean, we don't recognize the elderly. The elderly are being overprescribed with mm. certain drugs like Vi Vicodin, Oxycontin for pain. Mm -hmm. And next thing you know, they're addicted. But you don't hear too much because they're elderly people. And people don't think they're going to get addicted. But again, this can happen to anybody. So Lauren says stop the stigma and judgment and start treating this like the health crisis it is, which is the, the process that is certainly yes. happening right now. You know, it's a shame that some parents, matter of fact, we arrested, we arrested a mother for driving her son to a drug house because she didn't know what to do. She didn't know where to take him, and she was worried about losing her job if she took the kid to get help. Mm. You know, this woman is absolutely right. You have to get rid of the stigma because this is a disease and it's affecting all parts of society. Mm -hmm. And it is a stigma. I mean, again, I mean, when a parent, you break your arm, you take your kid to the hospital, but your kid gets hooked on drugs, but you don't want to get them help because you're worried about what the neighbors are going to say, or you're worried about losing your job. It's when ridiculous. you should be worried about losing your child because it's, that's what could happen if that ridiculous. abuse continues. Um, so there's a conversation on here. Uh, David talks about it, Michelle talks about it, methanol. Is this a, a drug or methadone, a drug that's used methadone. to treat? Uh -huh. it's, it's, it's nothing more but a supplemental drug. If you're a heroin addict, usually you're going to take methadone or suboxone. And what that to does, it, it kind of weans you off. But you know what? It, I know people they are selling it on the street. I mean, it's not really, it's is that the way to, to do it? That's someone. a temporary fix. Mm -hmm. It is. It's a temporary fix. And the main issue that I see as a law enforcement officer the lack of funding. You can't expect to get help for these people that are addicted to drugs with four or five treatments where the insurance companies are paying for it. Yeah. It's, it's impossible. Yeah. It's not going to work. You know, we get money from the state to do click it or ticket or drunk driving details. We don't receive any funding to help battle this. Is I that would like to changing? see. Is that conversation happening? We're talking about it. Mm -hmm. And we would like to see some more money coming from the state or the federal government to help curtail this. I mean, we do it for seat belts and alcohol, and this is a real issue. This isn't mm -hmm. going away. The conversation is about medication-assisted treatment, and Sue Van Steen says that works. So perhaps if it is somebody that's being put on some type of medication to get yes. off of these drugs, but that being it may, monitored by a doctor. Yes, it may help some, mm -hmm. not others, but again, I think it's a Band-Aid. You know, you need intense treatment, and you, you, there's no money three or four, five times going to a, a, a 
a psychologist or whoever, a medical facility, it's just not working. I want to invite anybody that's watching right now, if you have a question for Officer Rauhib, now is a great opportunity for you to ask. And I don't know if we covered everything here on the table. Now, I love gummy bears. Yes. You can't tell me there's something wrong with this package. Well, you know, I just wanted to bring this because what we're seeing now at a lot of the sporting events, you know, all throughout uh, Michigan, kids are bringing gummy bears there and they're soaking them in vodka. Oh. They bring them in plastic bags and they're eating them. Mm. Just something to look, you know, to you look, look out at. for, smell yes. it, let me see what you got going and on one there. One other thing I wanted to discuss is uh, Narcan. Most police agencies now are carrying Narcan. This is an auto injector. There's also a nasal spray. If we suspect that an individual is overdosing in an opioid, mm -hmm. we will administer this. And what this does, in most cases, not all cases, it reverses the overdose effect and the person and comes back. It, it, we've saved probably a dozen lives so far in the so last year. So how does it work? Well, it's simple, you just pull the, the top off. This trainer contains no needle or drug. It, it will tell you what to do. What you do is it'll tell you to put it on their leg. Yes. You push it down like a staple gun, you hold it for five seconds, and that's it. Immediately it reverses the overdose. What is it? It says there's no needle or anything in it. There's so. little prongs in here. Okay. And it, it will shoot the drug inside you. Wow. And, um, and it's instant. But it is a lifesaver, but you know what? Yeah, and again, I hear people saying, why are you using this on a drug addict? Well, you know what? That's our job to save lives. Right. You know? Yeah. looking to see if we have any more comments. I don't think we have, there's, they're having a conversation within the conversation amongst themselves. Well, I think we you. kind of covered a lot of yeah. what, um, Narcan is easy to use. I carry two doses at all times because you never know when you, you may happen across. Now this isn't, how do you get this? Uh, we ordered from a company or we go, it, it's through a prescription through the hospital. It's not hospital. like anybody can go and get this. No, I mean, you have to, we have, actually, we get it through the Families Against Narcotics Organization. They're, ex they're, they're somewhat expensive, too. Let's see, I'm a parent, Michelle McKay says, I'm a parent to a 13 and 16 year old, and I'm terrified about this. Where can I come to see your presentation and, and drug board? If they, if, if they want to contact the Fraser Department of Public Safety. Matter of fact, we're having an open house in our police agency sometime in October. It's on a Saturday. I can mm -hmm. get the date. Okay, and um, that's something it, you'd post on your Facebook page as well? It will be on our Facebook page, well. page yes. And the Facebook page name is? Just go to Fraser Department of Public Safety and you'll see the word Facebook. Click on it and just click on like okay. or accept and you'll become a member. And uh, again, we're having an open house. We'll have our elaborate drug display and we will show the parents what to look for. You know, the thing is with drugs, the trends keep changing. It's like technology, just like your iPhone changes every six or seven months. There's always something new in the drug industry, and we try to stay on top of the game. Mm -hmm. All right, well. I just learned it was October 7th. October 7th is the date. So that is for Michelle McCain and anybody else out there that is watching if you want to see the big drug board which is a massive display of every single different yes. drug you can possibly imagine so you know how to identify what it looks like and also all the different paraphernalia and more on the presentation and this is something the parents can come to but they can bring their kids to as well bring everybody bring and the this neighbors, is october everyone. 7th and where will it be at the fraser department of public safety at mm -hmm. 33,000 garfield in fraser michigan and i believe it starts at noon to three all right well Officer Rohib, we thank you so much for coming in and also Pleasure. your your true dedication and passion for doing whatever you can to lead your department throughout the state and helping to battle this epidemic. I thank you. And see your passion. Being here. appreciate it. Yeah. And we just want to uh, invite everybody else all day today. We are going to be discussing this more. Just like we did here, we have more stories of families, different people that are dealing with this addiction, the consequences of it, and so much more information about bringing awareness and education so that you can help to save one of your loved ones. So thanks for joining us for this edition, but we're back on Local 4 News at noon, also 4, 5, and 6, and we have a special tonight at 10 p.m., which will tackle this more for one full hour. So we hope you join us for that as well.